name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome everyone from wherever you are joining us from, near or far. We gather as the body of Christ to celebrate the gift of the body of Christ to us, to celebrate the word of the God who speaks. And today we have a parable. As we listen to it, we need to really grapple with the meaning and be able to respond to it. But here's a hint. It will remind us of the day that Pope Francis gave us on Sunday with a particular name given to it. Let us open ourselves to the word of the God who speaks. We are sinners, Lord, and you show us the way to repentance. Lord, have mercy. Your compassion and your love are from of old. Christ, have mercy. You call us to leave all and follow you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us call upon the spirit of baptism to unite us from wherever it is we are worshipping, so that we are aware, we experience being the one body of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Like a 
Holy Gospel according to Mark. So I'm just hamstrung with the days. Why does that pay Thursday? Okay, it's a mistake on the page. It's put Thursday a day earlier than it actually is. Jesus began to teach by the lakeside, but such a huge crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the lake and sat there. The people were all along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things in parables, and in the course of his teaching, he said to them, Listen, imagine a sower going out to sow. Now it happens that, as he sowed, some of the seed fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground where it found little soil, and sprang up straight away because there was no depth of earth, and when the sun came up, it was scorched, and having not having any roots, it withered away. Some seed fell into thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no crop. And some seed fell into rich soil, and, growing tall and strong, produced crop and yielded thirty sixty, even a hundredfold. And he said, Listen, anyone who has ears to hear. When he was alone, the twelve, together with the others who formed his company, asked what the parables meant. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God is given to you. But to those who are outside, everything comes in parables, so that they may see and see again, but not perceive, may hear and hear again, but not understand. Otherwise, they might be converted and forgiven. He said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? What the sower is sowing is the word of God. Those on the edge of the path where the word is sown are people who have no sooner heard it than Satan comes and carries away the word that was sown in them. Similarly, those who receive the seed on patches of rock are people who, when they first hear the word, welcome it at once with joy. But they have no root in them. They do not last. Should some trial come or some persecution on account of the word, they fall away at once. Then there are those who receive the seed in thorns. These have heard the word, but the worries of this world, the lure of riches, and all the other passions come in to choke the word, and so it produces nothing. And there are those who have received the seed in rich soil, and they hear the word, and accept it, and yield a harvest thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. The Gospel of the Lord. I may first of all emphasize something that is told us in the letter to the Hebrews. There is one single sacrifice for sin. Christ offered his life for us once in the room of the Last Supper, on the hill of Golgotha, in the empty tomb, 
in the glory of the kingdom of heaven. It's happened once. We know this, and we know that this Eucharist is us being totally connected to the Last Supper and Golgotha, etc. We are united with the whole of the body in this Eucharistic sacrifice. It's not a new one. It's not Mark 3. It's simply the one sacrifice in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago, and its effects are still being unfolded, opened out for us, like the Word of God in the parable, yielding this fantastic harvest. Sadly, we look around us in our society, our family, our friends, and we have to sigh with disappointment, at times disbelief, that so few are producing a harvest from the Word. So many seem to have been preoccupied and choked by the world around them. But we have to make sure, as witnesses to them, that the Word in us is being nurtured, encouraged, and growing. So, somebody mentioned the other day, I'm doing lots of reading. Great, but please make sure that some of that reading is from your Bibles, from the Word of God, to allow ourselves to be nurtured and supported, to yield, to encourage others to open their Bibles and read. And do remember an easy way to understand more and more what is being said is to join us this evening for Zoom. You need the link, I've sent it out to all those I had a few weeks ago on the parish email list. If you haven't got it, if you're new to us, please send me an email. You'll be able to ask questions on the comments. Um, I'm sure someone will give you the email address and then I will simply send you the link. Click on the link and you join us in splendor. And we break open the word of God so that we can be producing a harvest. There is so much to pray for. Let us first of all pray that we may be rich in producing a harvest from the word in our lives. Lord, heal us. Do you remember that we do have Bibles available here and I never remember the price, it's 17 or 18 pounds. I can find out. I've got little supports with them as well to help you understand. So just get in touch if you would like one. We pray for young people. We pray for children. It's great to hear the young people's voices reading the Psalms during the week. It really does lift my spirits. But we pray for them not able to see their friends really enjoying being homeschooled by mom and dad, grandma or granddad. Bless them all. Lord, hear us. And with great sadness, we acknowledge that we have gone over the 100,000 COVID dead. Each and every one of them, lives broken, lives in grief, for all sorts of different reasons. And when it comes to the funerals of those recent deaths, still very, very few can attend with severe restrictions for people's health and safety. We pray for those who care for the sick, for the families of those who grieve, for those doing the splendid work of inoculating with the vaccine amazing numbers of people every single day. Lord, hear us. And today is Holocaust Memorial Day, this dreadful sin against humanity perpetrated by the fascist, with six million Jews killed, hundreds of thousands of others, as, as we know, in our parish of St. Maximilian Kolbe, including our patron. 
many priests, many religious sisters, many catechists, because they were regarded as leaders who could help the people stand up to fascism. Pray for those who still grieve. Pray for those who sadly deny the reality of the Holocaust. Lord, heal us. And for those that we have been asked to pray for, all of them continue to struggle with their illness. Some, I'm aware, are moving to the end of their time with us here and journeying to the eternal kingdom. We lift them up to the healing Father. Hassan, Pat, Lillian Brocklesby, Julius and Ansi, Edmund, Kenneth Evans, Peter, Eileen Rushton, Steve, Jesse, and yesterday during the celebration of Mass, Catherine Redfern asked us to pray for her mum who was in theatre. For all the sick of the parish, all of those we are concerned for. Lord, heal us. For John Hanlon, Anthony Ward and Nicola Leyland. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And we remember the intentions of Joyce Wilkinson. We pray, Father, for the healing, the wholeness, the justice, the peace of your kingdom here with us now and the eternal kingdom. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise is at nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is one of the special Eucharistic prayers and it has the title, Jesus who went about doing good. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of Sabbath blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons, and the entire people you have made 
your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labour and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new, new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Maximilian Kolbe, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us, as we recall the dreadful Holocaust, pray for the kingdom of justice and of peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we are able, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
and in stillness just for a moment let's pray especially for those who might be finding this day particularly difficult may we know may they know that our peace the peace of the spirit is reaching out and is with them We pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. I'll be having a conversation later on with Father Ravi, but so far the only rates that we can find are already five days old. But please, God, they are continuing to drop. So we should be able to share some news with you tomorrow and obviously send it out on WhatsApp and also the email. Do remember, join us this evening for Apple Formation, 7 o'clock via Zoom. It will also be live streamed when we'll break open the Word of God from last Sunday. Now, because today is the Holocaust Memorial Day, there's a film being re-shown at 9 o'clock on BBC4. It's called The Windermere Children. I saw it, I think, when it was first on. The, it's got one of my favourite English actors in it anyway. But it tells the, the true story of young boys, girls who have survived the Holocaust and are brought to England after the end of the Second War. And this is the story of some of them in an old camp on Windermere. Yes, it does deal with their traumas, but in this time of Holocaust denial, in this time of growing anti-Semitism, we Catholics should be aware, we should be reminded of the horrors perpetrated on these people and obviously on our own people as well. Well, all people are the people of God. So please do watch it if you feel you can. 9, I said 9 a.m., didn't I? 9 p.m. BBC 4. I'll be going to the food bank at about 2 o'clock today. Already there is a, a mountain of bags in the hallway, the hallway of the house. So please, if you want any want anything to be taken down, if you can drop it into the porch in the presbytery before two, that would be great. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.